Speaking of nationalised public services and the worst people in politics in the moment, guess who's in the news again? Of course, it's friend of the show, Wes Streeting. Let's go! So I'm sure everybody's seen this now because it's really been doing the rounds on social media. But this is what Wes Streeting had to say to The Sun. Friends of Liverpool, The Sun. Of course he's writing in The Sun for this one. It was reported in The Guardian. I didn't even realise literally until just now that he'd written this article in the f sun of all places so he wrote labor is too nostalgic about the nhs i'll listen to patients and reform it if you can listen to patients patients want it to be less privatized they want it to be more nationalized every all about public or private ownership of the nhs they want it all back in public ownership you're doing the opposite of what patients want and just selling and hacking bits off is not going to make it better, it's going to make it worse. I can't believe he's writing this in the sun as well. It's worth streeting ready to be the most unpopular man in the Labour Party. He already basically is at this point, we all hate him, we all fucking despise him. His stark warning is to get rid of the stupid stuff, okay? With Labour's constant boast to be the party of the NHS, he knows he is going to take fire if, as the Polans indicate, he'll be in charge of its 1.3 million staff by the end of the year. Every time I make a reform argument, there are howls of outrage from online activists, he told The Sun, on the eve of a major speech declaring a war against NHS waste. But one of the reasons I'm passionate about reform arguments and making the case is because I want staff who've told me the NHS needs to change and patients who've told me the NHS needs to change to know someone's listened. I mean, they want it to change back to the model we had before. When they say change, they mostly mean just it getting better. They don't necessarily mean you hacking bits off and selling it to the people who donated you money from the private healthcare sector, but... We'll, 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 we'll look into the article first. Weasel screeching. Yeah, that's, that's who he is. That's who he is. But again, he keeps saying reform argument. It's all shorthand for privatisation. One of the reasons I'm passionate about reform arguments and making the case is because I want staff who've told me the NHS needs to change it. Blah, blah, blah. We read that before. You can't just keep on pouring ever-increasing amounts of money into a leaky bucket. You've got to deal with the bucket itself. Wesley. The bucket is not leaky. It is empty. It is fucking empty wesley again so what this article is all about it's about nhs waste and finding efficiency savings there are no efficiency savings in the nhs they tried that in the austerity period under david cameron and under nick clegg from 2010 to 2016 there were no efficiency savings turns out when you actually look at it when you speak to members of the nhs staff you will know if you'd have done any research on this whatsoever which of course he hasn't because this man hates our nhs staff with a passion clearly when you actually listen to these people you'll find out that these work people work very very efficiently efficiently on a threadbare budget after all of this austerity and all the cutbacks to capital investment they already work incredibly efficiently Whenever you try and make efficiency savings, all you lead to is a reduction in service provision. That's all that's happened, and that is all that has happened over the last 14 years of trying to find quote-unquote efficiency savings. We are an unironic position where West Streeting is now to the right of Boris Johnson, because at least Boris Johnson came out and said, we need loads of capital investment, 40 new hospitals, everybody. Obviously, it never came to fruition, but at least rhetorically, he was meeting the population where they are, which is just extra facilities, more spending, more investment, more capital investment in the NHS. Efficiency savings is a new cutting red tape bullshit. 100% Zoombab. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. There is no efficiency savings, right? There is NHS waste though. But he thinks NHS waste is in terms of the way in which they operate. The, you know, staff need to be more productive or whatever. The waste is coming from us paying for the CEO pay and the dividend pays out of the private companies who you want to have a larger role within the health service, Wesley. That's where the waste is. The waste is coming from the profits of the private companies who we subcontract out all of our NHS services services to. If it was publicly owned, there'd be no shareholder dividends. There would be no CEO bonuses. It's not a difficult concept for me to be able to grasp. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's incredibly difficult. But then again, West Streeting has the IQ of a pineapple. So I'm not surprised he doesn't get a very simple procedure like this. But then again, I guess he's paid very handsomely by his private sector donors to not understand simple concepts like these. Anyway, let's move on. He is scathing about previous efforts since Labour lost office in 2010 to get real on the health service, a body which cost the taxpayer £187 billion this year. I think there are times when the Labour Party has led too heavily on nostalgia. It would be the easiest thing in the world to go into the next general election just saying, worst crisis in NHS history, and you can't trust the Tories on the NHS, you've got 24 hours to save the NHS, and by the way, here's a nice sepia film of Nye Bevan. I mean, he's not wrong in necessarily saying you can't just sit here and say it's terrible, but you need to argue facts. You need to argue correctly. 
rather than saying random nonsense that David Cameron was saying. And then after 14 years of that failing, just saying, oh, we need to do Cameron but even more, more efficiency savings, more private sector involvement, when both of those things have shown to have failed by the Conservatives that have already failed the NHS, as has been said by many of your compatriots in the party. You can't point to 14 years of Tory failure and then say the problem was they didn't do enough of the Toryism. It's such a ridiculous point to make. It's completely stupid. When it was pointed out this is exactly what the Labour Party does every election, Mr. Streeting is adamant. Well, we haven't done very well in the last four, so I'm not planning to repeat those mistakes. Do you think, Wesley, Wesley, do you think that promising to spend money on the NHS was the reason why Labour didn't win the elections? Do you think that Jeremy Corbyn lost in 2017 because he said, let's spend money on the NHS? Clearly, promising to spend money on the NHS is not an election loser, because that's exactly what Boris Johnson ran on in 2019 and got his gigantic majority. Fresh from a tour of Australia and the Far East looking at how other healthcare systems work, he says there are more ways to get improvement than simply shouting about privatisation. In Singapore General Hospital, they had this initiative called Getting Rid of Stupid Stuff. I'm sure that very aptly named plan is a model that we can absolutely massively apply to our own NHS. It's interesting he says, oh well, shouting about privatisation when he's going to countries which have loads of privatisation in their, in their models of healthcare provision. Literally going to Singapore for arguments on what we should do with our NHS. Guess who was shouting about how much better the Singapore healthcare system was when they were on talk TV? Yeah, Reem Ibrahim of the Institute of Economic Affairs, quite coincidentally, the very same Reem Ibrahim, who was on a panel with West Streeting last year, telling West Streeting how much she loved the fact that he was talking about NHS reform. And she's working for a private sector think tank that says they want to abolish the NHS. Honestly, you couldn't make this shit up. You couldn't make it up. And there was a culture of basically any member of staff where they see things not running well or where they could see scope for improvement, they were actively encouraged to put their ideas in and they'd be recognised and rewarded for doing that. We've got to improve the productivity of the NHS. There we go, 100%, right? Blame the NHS staff, they're not being productive enough. The thing is, our NHS staff, they can all see scope for improvement. And the scope for improvement is giving us more money, putting more money in, increasing our level of spending, which I will remind everybody, continually dropped as a percentage of GDP from 2010 to 2018. It's the way the bureaucracy is. I wonder, Wes, right? At least he's not blaming the staff for this next paragraph. I wonder, Wes, 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 Oh my God, this man. Oh, he's going he's gonna to give me an aneurysm. He's going to drive me insane. I'm going to have a heart attack on live on camera. Heaven forfend. So what's his plan? Especially at a time when Mr. Streeting is the first to admit more money is not the answer, which is lucky because there's none left. Lie, but okay. It's not right to keep asking people on low to middle incomes to pay high taxes when they're struggling. I agree, Wesley. I agree. Turns out, also, you know, I'm going to have to bring you, bring you in close again, Wesley. Come on, come on. A little bit closer. Yeah, yeah. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. How about you tax the rich? You know, you don't have to tax poor people when there are billionaires and millionaires who don't have any wealth taxes. We can increase capital gains taxes. I agree we shouldn't be taxing poor people. We should be taxing the rich, but you won't do that either. Mr. Streeting has identified more than £10 billion in waste. A drop in the ocean compared to the budget, but clamping down on that will not be enough. I mean, I will, I'd love to see his calculations for this £10 billion of waste, which we were told was there from 2010 to 2016 during the austerity period that never materialised and just led to cutbacks in service provision. What we have done is identify best practice in the NHS that is proven to work, proven to deliver better outcomes for patients, and proven to deliver better value for taxpayers' money. The challenge I pose to the system is, if you can do it in one hospital, why aren't you doing it in all hospitals? He believes in a better joined up system. The NHS has more pilots than the RAF. Again, just nonsense, Cameronisms, still using pages, etc. He wants the NHS more to run like private companies, giving users easy options at their fingertips. How about we don't operate like a private system because private companies are in search of profit, not social utility. This morning, DPT text messaged to me to tell this parcel was being delivered. They gave me my slot and gave me an opportunity to change it. Why is it with the NHS you can't turn around and say, actually, that isn't convenient, I need to change it, or you think, oh, I forgot about that. It's almost like there are also certain other levels to which the NHS is operating on social utility and not just profit. I swear to God, Wesley, I swear to fucking God, if I get my hands on you, it's just those basic things that basic organisation of the system and this is not revolutionary technology. Well, I agree that we should be spending more on upgrading the technology of the NHS. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not a terrible thing to upgrade the technology of the NHS. But that shouldn't mean working like a private company. It shouldn't mean making things in terms of the profit motive. And that also, if you want to have technology, 
it's going to require more money and more investment, which you say you don't want to do. You reckon his barbershop is more tech savvy than the NHS? So what does success look like a year into a potential Labour government? Will he really be able to do this without putting up taxes or pouring more money into the system? I'll come back and tell Sun readers by the end of the first term, he says. I am not messianic enough to believe that sitting behind one desk at the Department of Health is going to solve all the nation's problems. It is about having the right plan and the right team and mobilising people with the right support to get the NHS back on its feet, fit for the future. That's my mission. So no, he has no policy, he just has rhetoric and making up nonsense about looking at Singapore or about £10 billion of inefficiencies. Yeah, I really hope so too, Edward. I really hope he loses his seat to that Palestinian lady standing against him because this man cannot be given the, the keys to the NHS. Do not trust him. He is a fugly slut. Do not trust this man. Do not trust him with our precious health service. He cannot be trusted. But he's very happy to let Palantir get all of their hands on our NHS data as well. What a scumbag. What an awful, awful individual. I hate him. I hate him so much. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment. That helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for memberships. It's just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.